The Supreme Court has ruled in favor of a Muslim woman who sued Abercrombie and Fitch when they didn't give her a job because she wears a headscarf. I got a better idea. Don't work at Abercrombie and Fitch. Abercrombie and Fitch is one of those snooty stores with a certain look policy. Makeup must look natural, no facial hair, no more than two earrings for women, none for men, fingernails should be shorter than one fourth inch, no unnatural fingernail color polish, highlights must be blended and not chunky, only classic hairstyles, no hats or head coverings. Basically, the store has an OCD look policy and even calls their employees models. Well, the public ones, anyway, they keep the uggos in the back. This is the same store whose owner said that he didn't want fat people wearing his clothes, even though he's a little tubby himself. They're obsessed with the typical boring prep look. In the job interview, they rate candidates based on their appearance and sense of style. It looks like this Muslim woman rated low in those categories because of her headscarf, which she wears because of religious reasons. Now, some people are saying that the Supreme Court ruling is a victory for religious freedom. Not exactly. Once again, there's a difference between public and private. Religious freedom, the First Amendment, all of that apply to the government. The government cannot make a law prohibiting the free exercise of religion. So for example, if the US government decided to ban headscarves like the government of France has done, that would violate religious freedom or just generally the freedom to wear whatever the heck you want. The First Amendment was written to restrict the government and not overpriced clothing stores. Abercrombie and Fitch has no real power over you. All they can do is say, you can't work for us or you can't come into our store to buy our stuff. Ooh. They can't stop you from getting a job elsewhere with a company that isn't ridiculous and you might actually like working there. Who knows? The store owner might be a jerk or might have completely unreasonable policies, but isn't freedom a two-way street? The government coming in and changing a company's policies, isn't that violating their freedom? These are tricky issues and it's not always popular to defend the freedom of the business owner. However, their freedom still counts. Taxpayers shouldn't be forced to pay for other people's birth control. Ugh, it's 2015. Who's against birth control, you backwards Christian fundamentalist?